All right, let's downgrade your Windows 11 to Windows 10 in the fastest and most efficient way without wasting any time. First, you need to download the installation file for Windows 10. Look online for Download Windows 10 and go to the first result that leads to Microsoft's download page. Previously, you could download the Windows 10 ISO directly, but now that option is no longer available unless you use a workaround. The only official way is through the Media Creation Tool, so go ahead and download it through the Download Now button and save it to your preferred downloads folder. Then locate it and run the media creation tool file. Once the setup loads up, click accept to agree to the license terms. Next, you have two options to choose from regarding what to do with this installation. The first option is upgrade this PC, which lets you update your current Windows installation while preserving all your files and applications without needing a fresh install. The second option is create installation media, which lets you create bootable media for for installing Windows 10 on a different computer. Select the second option and click Next. At this stage, you'll configure the language, edition, and system architecture. It's best to leave the recommended default settings as they are optimized for most systems to ensure full compatibility with your hardware. Click Next to proceed. At this point, you need to decide which media type to use. The first option is a USB flash drive, which is required if you plan to install Windows directly from a bootable USB drive on a computer that doesn't doesn't have an operating system installed. The second option is an ISO file, which is necessary for this method. Select ISO file and click Next. Then choose a save location on your computer where you want the ISO file to be stored. Then wait for the download to complete. It will take a while to finish. Click Finish to complete. Next, find where you save the ISO file, right-click it, and select Mount to load it as a virtual DVD drive that your computer can read without needing physical media. Once the mounted drive opens, you'll see all the installation files. Then, run the setup.exe file. Wait for the setup to prepare everything and load up. Click Next to proceed. Give it a moment to check for updates. Then, click Accept to agree to the license terms and proceed. Here, you will be asked what files to keep, but since it is a downgrade to Windows 10, the setup does not allow you to keep any files. So, leave it as nothing and click Next to instruct it to erase Windows 11. It will ask you to confirm your choice. Here, you should double check whether you have backed up every important file, including pictures, documents, and anything else that might be valuable. If you are positive that you have backed up everything, then click yes. But if you need help with backing up everything, then stick to the end of this video. I will show you how to do it. Now, wait again for the setup to check for updates. This is the last step before the actual installation. Again, if you are sure you didn't forget anything to back up, then click install. Now, wait for the installation to complete. This will take a while. At this point, you will enter the Windows 10 configuration phase. Choose your region and click Yes. Then, select your keyboard layout and click Yes. If you need a secondary keyboard layout, you can set it up here or click Skip. Once again, give it a moment to set everything up. Next, you have two choices for how to set up your Windows. The first option is for personal use, which gives you access to consumer features like Microsoft account integration and personalization options tailored for individual users. The second option is for an organization, which provides access to business-oriented features and management tools designed for workplace environments. Go ahead and select your choice. I will proceed with selecting for personal use. In this step, you can log into your Microsoft account if you have one, or create an offline account if you prefer. The difference is that a Microsoft account synchronizes your settings across devices and grants access to Microsoft services, while an offline account keeps everything local to just this computer. Next, at this step, it asks you to create a PIN, which is a faster and more secure way to sign into your Windows device compared to traditional passwords. Go ahead and click Create PIN to set up a PIN code. Next, if you do not use Edge, skip this step. Otherwise, log in to transfer your bookmarks and settings to your browser. On this step, go ahead and configure privacy settings. I usually disable all of them because I do not require these features and prefer more privacy. You can always Always enable any of these features later if needed. Here, you can set up a pre-made Windows configuration for certain purposes. Just click Skip to go with the default setup. You can also connect your Android phone to Windows here if you wish. Otherwise, click No Thanks. At this point, click Skip to reject Microsoft's offers. Again, click Decline and then Decline again. Any rejected offers can be accessed later if needed. Here, just click Next. Again, reject the offer by clicking No Thanks. Click Not Now and wait for the 
installation to finish. This may take a while, and now you are in your freshly downgraded Windows 10. Go ahead and update your Windows and add all the drivers. Once that's done, you can restore your backed up files and settings. Here's how to back up your Windows 11 settings and files directly in Windows. Let's take a step back in time before the downgrade. Open Windows Search and look for Windows Backup. This is where you can back up folders, apps, settings, and credentials for easier restoration after your downgrade, saving you hours of manual reconfiguration work. To start the process, click the Backup button. Then, if you are not using a Microsoft account on your Windows, you will need to sign in to a Microsoft account. Once that's done, click Yes Sync. That will sync your Windows settings to your Microsoft account. Click Done. And as you see, it already is backing stuff up, but that's not all. You still need to do two things before you can safely proceed with the downgrade to Windows 10. It is likely you will be asked to verify your Microsoft account before any credentials can be backed up. That is one thing. Click Retry, and in the next window, click Verify. It will ask you to verify your email by requiring you to enter a code that will be sent to your email. Follow the instructions and complete this straightforward process. Next, once verified, your credentials and preferences will be synced up. The second thing you need to do is to install Microsoft's OneDrive to back up your personal files, such as documents, pictures, and videos. If you have it already on your machine, then skip this step. Otherwise, look up online, download OneDrive. Go to the first result that leads to Microsoft.com OneDrive page. Download it, save it. Locate the downloaded install file and install it. Then go back to Windows Backup and check whether everything is backing up. Once that's done, go to the OneDrive online dashboard. Look, here's one important thing you need to know. The OneDrive free version gives for free only 5 gigabytes to back up your stuff. So, if your images and documents are less than 5 gigabytes big, then you have nothing else to do here. But if your files take more space, which is likely to be true for the majority of you, then you need to upgrade your OneDrive account. The good news is, it barely costs anything. A couple of euros or dollars for the basic upgrade, which will allocate 100 gigabytes to you. But here is how you can get access to those 100 gigabytes for free. Close this pop-up window and refresh the page. Microsoft will offer you a free trial for one month. Sign up for it, transfer your files, downgrade your Windows, and then restore your backed up files and cancel the trial. Next, finalize the backup process. Verify that all your files are backed up. Be 100% sure before you proceed with the downgrade. Continuing where we left off last time after finalizing the downgrade, sign in to your Windows account, and that should sync up all your settings and credentials. Then log in to your OneDrive account and restore everything you backed up and complete your Windows environment. And you are done. The downgrade installation process can seem complex, but following these steps ensures you have a clean and properly configured system. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more helpful tech tutorials, and I'll see you next time.